Mona Chalabi's TED Talk presentation introduced concepts of scrutinizing data in terms of accuracy and bias. And although she never pronounced her name, I'm assuming or hoping that I pronounced her name correctly, we were tasked with finding three charts of our own to compare against the questions that she informed her listeners to consider when scrutinizing data reliability. And the three charts I found were all from CNN.com. The first one was entitled Countries with the Most Guns Per Capita. And this was put forth by the Small Arms Survey in 2007. So they were the ones that developed this chart or the data that this chart was derived from. And I looked into that source in relation to her question of how was the data collected. So I went to their website and learned that the Small Arms Survey is an independent research project from Geneva, Switzerland. And furthermore, they're supported by the Swiss Federal Department of Foreign Affairs with contributions from numer numerous other foreign government entities such as uh, Canada and the UK, among others. And this data included a lot of um, different variables. They had extensive information regarding how they compiled this research. And they did say that global and unlicensed small arm productions were estimates. So estimates, as Chalabi argues, are potentially problematic. Uh, the 88.8 .8 guns per 100 people in U.S. civilian gun ownership statistic does include military production figures, even though the chart states that it's a civilian ownership data. So that variable scales data up. And so even having scrutinized it against that military production uh, para parameter, I would say that the definitions, relevance, and the accuracy of the participant data, um, such as high U.S. transparency rating, equates to generally withstanding my scrutiny of where the data came from, minus the fact that Mili there's a military inclusion contingency in relation to how that data is put forward in terms of being a civilian uh, chart. The second uh, visual, visually represented chart I found was from the FBI or Federal Bureau of Investigation and it was titled U.S. Homicide Rate from 1960 to 2014. Basically, had a subtitle that said 2013 and 2014 were the lowest homicide rates in more than 50 years of data reporting. <clears throat> and I cross referenced this data with Chalabi's question of can you see uncertainty? And I ascertained that. The FBI data in this chart definitely uses national average calculation, again, that Chalabi warns to be cognizant of. So while murder rate is adjusted for population, one can question demographic considerations like gender, poverty rates, and even weather that are all known to correlate with homicide rates. And so this long lineage of over 50 years of annual quantification raises questions of data reporting conformity, which is a form of uncertainty. And interestingly, I found another FBI statistic from that same year, 2013, that stated that even though the lowest U.S. rate was at that time, it still ranked highest globally or among the highest. And so I would argue that even averaging and global scrutiny problems still lead to overall FBI data upholding Chalabi uncertainty scrutiny.
And the last chart that I looked at involved risk for active shooter incidents. And I cross-referenced this chart with Chalabi's third question of, can I see myself in the data? And this is a pie chart with different environments of active shooter incident risk. And so I basically looked at postulations of where I spend my time. And I don't particularly find myself in brick and mortar business locations. And so I didn't include those in my uh, risk assessment percentage, although I do occasionally find myself there. I felt probability-wise it didn't apply. And my risk environments included schools, open spaces, houses of worship, and residences as primary risks. And so my total was 24.4 plus 9.4 plus 3.8 plus 4.4, leading to uh, an overall risk percentage of 42%. And so while my location risk didn't include the highest risk of business location, it did include the second highest risk location of schools. And I would argue that yes, I can see myself in this data and that it withstands Chalabi or Chalabi's personalization scrutiny. So for all three charts, I would advocate that they uphold scrutiny. Thank you.